Dzień dobry Państwu, dziękuję za dołączenie na nasze webinarium poświęcone przygotowaniu bibliotek DNA do sekwencjonowania dla próbek od płynnej biopsji do analizy metagenomu. Drugą częścią analizy, drugą częścią naszego spotkania dzisiejszego będzie analiza wyników w programie Warsam Clinical. Niniejsze spotkanie jako Perlan organizujemy z naszymi dostawcami produktów, czyli firmą Swift Bioscience oraz firmą Safetor, sprzedawcą firmy programu Warsam Clinical. Jako Perlan mamy w swojej ofercie kompletne rozwiązania do analizy za pomocą sekwencjonowania następnej generacji, a więc oferujemy Państwu odczynniki do przygotowania bibliotek zarówno firmy Agilent, jak i Swift Bioscience, kontrolę jakości za pomocą urządzeń typu Bioanalizator, Tape Station czy Fragment Analyzer, a następnie analizę wyników w programach Alisa oraz Warsam. Każde z tych rozwiązań ma swoje zalety. Dzisiaj skupimy się na rozwiązaniach od firmy Swift oraz Warsam. W skrócie telegraficznym oferta firmy Swift sprowadza się do dostarczaniu Państwa amplikonowych paneli, które w ciągu dwóch godzin mogą dać Państwu gotową do sekwencjonowania bibliotekę. Jakość DNA e, pozwala na zastosowanie tych zestawów do izolatów zarówno z trudnych e, próbek, jak i e, pełnej krwi. Może być zastosowane również e, te zestawy do badania metylacji, do analizy transkryptomu oraz właśnie do analiz metagenomicznych. I w tym momencie analiza wyników z paneli amplikonowych może być robiona na przykład w programie Warsam Clinical. Z kolei oferta Warsam jest to możliwość analizy już pojedynczych prób, niezależnie od tego, skąd mają Państwo wyniki sekwencjonowania. Więc można przygotować biblioteki zarówno zestawami, które kupują Państwo od nas, jako firmy Perlan, ale również mogą być to wyniki uzyskane na innych platformach odczynnikowych. Olbrzymią zaletą jest to, że Warsam jest również dostępny w wersji bezpłatnej. Podejrzewam, że większość z Państwa korzysta już z tego programu do analizy wariantów. Natomiast wersja płatna firmy Warsam Clinical umożliwia Państwu automatyczną analizę wyników NGS już od plików typu FastQ albo VCF. A teraz już zaproszę pierwszego mówcę, czyli Gerarda Dambrowskasa z firmy Swift Bioscience. Hello Gerardas, I would like to pass the ball to you right now. So I will stop sharing the screen and please feel free to uh, demonstrate the solution from Swift Bioscience. Yes, good. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Wojtek, for introduction. And uh, I will start sharing my screen in a minute. Can you see the screen, Wojtek? Not yet. Okay. No, probably you should be able to see it. Just make it full screen and it's perfect. Yeah, okay, good. Yes, good morning, everybody. Uh, once again, um, I'm Gerardas Dambrauskas uh, from Swift Biosciences. Uh, we work with Perlan uh, with our exclusive distributor for Polish market. And today's webinar it's in partnership with our partners uh, uh, for data analysis uh, company Varsum. Uh, so I will start with uh, my title, as you see here on the screen. Uh, as uh, uh, Wojtek already introduced, uh, uh, some of uh, uh, what I was going to present. So the title is Swift Amplicon Panels uh, and Turbo. So this is our um, wool genome uh, kit, uh, which is efficient uh, target enrichment uh, ranging from uh, uh, difficult samples such as liquid biopsy, and uh, it all the way goes to metagenomic sequencing. Uh, so a quick snapshot of the company itself. Uh, it's an American company. We're based in uh, Michigan and Arbor, uh, and all we do is uh, we focus on the NGS library. Um, manufacturing kits. 
uh, for the compatible platforms, mainly Illumina and Ion Torrent. Uh, we do hold the wide, uh, pr broad portfolio of the uh, intellectual property uh, that will, will secure uh, the chemistry used in our kits. As it was mentioned, uh, we focus on the cell-free DNA, FFP, PCR-free libraries, and so on. And that allows us to do all our customers to do whole genome sequencing uh, or target, target enrichment by the hybridization, which we also do the, have the kits. As it was mentioned, we focus on methylation um, analysis or methylation libraries. Amplicon sequencing, we do have a custom sequence, a custom Amplicon sequencing and uh, the library normalization prior pooling. So today I'm going to focus on the whole genome sequencing and the Amplicon sequencing. The company is ISO certified. So this is where our portfolio, how it fits into whole genome sequencing, whether you're doing uh, well, exome sequencing or targeted sequencing. Mm -hmm. So the wall, for wall genome sequencing, we use um, uh, the quick and uh, very efficient, uh, uh, we call it a Swift US Turbo Kit uh, that I'm going to focus today. And uh, uh, for targeted sequencing, for target enrichment, so this is a more um, focused approach, we use Excel Amplicon panels or the custom, uh, custom Amplicon panels as well. So I will dive straight into the uh, whole genome sequencing and the uh, kit that we currently do have. It's a short uh, library preparation uh, workflow. We call it Turbo. Uh, it's a single tube, um, two step a library um, preparation kit, which is an enzymatic, uh, enzymatic uh, target digestion. At the same time, uh, it's a DNA repair and A tailing. So you can see it takes about an hour of this wall step. And then the ligation of the adapter molecules, whether, it, whether it's a truncated adapter or whether it's a full length adapter indicated here. And that will allow you to do PCR or have a PCR free version. Uh, it's, uh, we use uh, indices combinatorial dual, unique dual, uh, the indices that are compatible with Illumina and uh, to some extent, ion torrent uh, flow cell. This is how we differentiate uh, from our competition. Uh, in terms of timing, which is clearly see, uh, shown here. So the total procedure is uh, around uh, less than two hour protocol compared to our competition. Another uh, distinguishable feature for, uh, for our to us Turbo is that uh, independent, independent on the, of the um, quantity or concentration of your sample input, we have a very reproducible fragmentation uh, or um, fr uh, library fragment size, as you can see here. In comparison, uh, we did some in-house run on our competitor, and you can see here that varying input uh, gives you uh, not so much reproducible uh, insert size. And this is very, very important for your sequencing uh, result because different uh, uh, library sizes do not cluster, um, do not cluster efficiently or do not cluster evenly. So Swift went a step ahead and not only we can uh, have a very reproducible um, insert size, we can also have a varying size upon a customer's request. So we are currently the only company that does that on the market where we can have a, a higher or a smaller, so longer or smaller insert size upon request. So how we do it, uh, the customer uses deceleration reagent, we call it DE, and depending on its concentration, we can drive the library towards lower end of insert sizes or higher end of insert sizes. So this is upon a request and uh, 
uh, it's a custom made feature that can be an add-on add -on to the kit, especially for the metagenomics. Uh, metagenomics researchers, we found that they may want to work with the uh, longer fragments that they see. Not only we can control using the DEA agent, uh, not, uh, the, the, the library size, we can also control the uh, we, can, we can also control using the spry beads or the spry concentration. So relaxing the spry concentration, you can drive the libraries to a uh, larger insert size. So those two approaches are the using the deceleration reagent or uh, the um, uh, spry uh, concentration sample to um, to spry ratio. We can really fine tune uh, the uh, wanted library insert size. So we looked uh, and uh, at the bias, at the bias, and this is a quite important. So GC bias, and this is quite important for the metagenomic studies, where you we can uh, see that uh, uh, some of the microorganisms with uh, uh, the high GC content tend not to be covered very well. So what we are looking here is these Packard plots, and we are looking at the um, those, uh, the, the line indicated by circles. So you would like to see, and this is the coverage, so you would like to see the coverage as flat as possible, closer to one. And on the uh, y, on the x-axis, you see the GC content. So increasing the GC content or decreasing the GC content gives some bias from uh, other library construction kits. Uh, now for Turbo, we looked at this very, very carefully, so you could see of a lesser, lesser bias uh, in terms of coverage. So there's no preferential enrichment for uh, the GC rich or GC poor regions in the libraries uh, made by 2S Turbo. So this is the uh, another um, example of how we perform in terms of the sequence capture. So varying the input, so the input is going from 100 nanograms into the uh, library construction kit. So you use Turbo, to make the library and then you use the uh, probes it could be from swift it could be from third party to do the target enrichment uh, and the input varies between 100 uh, nanograms uh, to one nanogram if we look at the industry standard of how what is the percentage of bases that have a 20x coverage we perform not. Uh, we, we perform equally well as our competition. The main difference becomes is that when you use lower inputs, and that uh, comes from the genomic samples, or that comes from the um, cell-free DNA, circulating tumor DNA, where the input is always a issue, or, or the concentration, uh, having enough of the samples, is always an issue. Uh, so we perform with our turbo, and this is a benchmark in our laboratory uh, compared to our competition. So the 20x coverage doesn't drop that much if we put uh, less of a sample compared to our competition. Uh, just wanted to highlight this, uh, the percentage of the duplication. This comes from the HiSec uh, high 4000. Uh, and their flow, so uh, the chemistry is set up as this, so it produces quite a lot of duplications. Uh, we haven't got anything uh, uh, newer machine in the in our in-house, and uh, I've seen some data on, of Novasec. So this is the duplication rate is dramatically reduced, probably down to about 25 percent. But this is an inherited is this this is an in inherited in the high sec machines that they produce a lot of dupes. Uh, this is our uh, customer testimony uh, using uh, uh, Swift Turbo against the competing market product. And again, uh, they see, and this is actually their data, this is the insert size uh, on the left. And you can see here, this is a very highly reproducible insert size compared to uh, Nextera XT in this particular case, for example. 
We went uh, and did uh, another experiment where we uh, used the ATCC standard. Uh, this is the biodepository um, sample. You can get it uh, from uh, uh, the company. It's a commercial uh, from a commercial source, and uh, it contains uh, the um, those strains indicated here, and at they vary at GC content. And the, each of the strain is at a certain proportion, and it's already indicated. So you can see here the genome proportion on the left, and these are different strains of bacteria here. And the expected genome proportion is in red, and the different inputs uh, from uh, uh, into the 2S Turbo library is indicated here. So this is really shows the high reproducibility and uh, no GC bias in terms of uh, uh, having uh, uh, the the genome proportion to what it's, it's is expected, and you, as you can see here, the uh, bacterial strains do vary uh, do vary from uh, low GC content to very high GC content indicated here. So the GC content does not uh, influence the accuracy of 2S turbo performance in the metagenomics samples. Uh, now I would like to switch to the Amplicon panels. Um, this is our um, uh, second product where we could enrich the target by PCR. So we used to have it all the version of our Amplicon panels indicated here, which we still do have it on the shelf. But what we did, we recently uh, developed uh, the SNAP version what that stands for is the SWIFT Normalize Amplicon Panel. Now, the Normalize doesn't tell you anything at this very moment, but I will go and show what, what I do mean by Normalize in the latest slide. So basically, if we go through the protocol, it's a two PCR step. It's a multiplex PCR for target enrichment uh, with the custom design primers or <clears throat> the primers that we uh, have on the shelf uh, targeted, targeting specific regions, which I'll come in in a second. And then it's an indexing PCR to bring on the uh, adapters to the library. Okay, so these are the two uh, elegant, uh, simple steps. And then you can go and do the your normal uh, sample pooling, or you can go and do the normalize which is embedded in the kit. What it, what it does, it basically normalizes different libraries, uh, up to 384 libraries, uh, you can normalize without doing the qPCR or uh, serial dilutions. And you end up with the pool, with one single pool, that is ready to be sequenced and ready to be demultiplexed. So just a quick uh, snapshot of the protocol. Without the normal A step, how we compare to our competition? So it's a two step, one single tube. So one library gets one tube. Um, in the, the competition, the library gets split between three tubes and, and, and so on and more. How does the normal A? And this is a unique um, from Swift. So imagine these are your individual libraries here. So libraries that are produced from the Amplicon protocol. Uh, with the Amplicon protocol that I just showed you. Um, and it's a normally PCR uh, needed. So this is the last part of this um, of this uh, attach, uh, adapter, uh, attachment and indexing PCR. So that's this actually step. It's the part of the library, which you can stop here and do your own way of normalization, or you can continue in the normalize. So it doesn't really add any more steps to the uh, extra steps to the library um, library preparation. Then you go into the enzymatic reaction, which we call it normally is one. Uh, each library has to have a certain threshold, at least six nanomolars of the sample. In most of the cases, six nanomolars is uh, very achievable in 99% of the libraries. You will, will have uh, six nanomolars of the starting material. So imagine these are your libraries. It could be anything above six nanomolars. Uh, the normalized one is an enzymatic, uh, enzymatic, 
approach that will mark a certain certain um, library um, concentration or certain fraction of the library in each of your libraries and then you pool those samples and then use normalize two so this step here is 15 minute incubation at 37 degrees this step is 37 uh, uh, 15 minute incubation at 37 degrees so normalize two will get rid of the excess of the libraries and uh, it will there is a cleanup step here which will be removed during the cleanup or the spry selection and you will end up with just the uh, equimolar concentration for each of the library and as i said it could be 384 libraries so imagine doing 384 libraries uh qpcr uh, there's a lot in triplicates uh, so there's a lot of um, qpcr plates that you would use and this final uh, nano uh, this final uh, pool is at two nanomolar uh, so we are starting from six down to two nanomolar the other way you, we also have the kit starting from 12 nanomolar to four nanomolar the final concentration of the pooled of the library pool so this is just the to illustrate that your um, libraries your inputs in here on the left uh, on, on the on the y-axis is the uh, input concentrations on the x-axis is the different samples and different inputs but each library uh, has more than 12 or more than 6 nanomolar as a threshold above threshold and then uh, uh, doing the qpcr normalization and then demultiplexing the samples and counting the reads so this is how the reads distribute and the coefficient of variation between the reads is about 23.9 percent in this particular case normally the customers get about 15 percent coefficient of variation with the qpcr re results when they fine-tune the reaction itself or the the quantitation itself with normalize, you don't do QPCR. As I said, you use those two incubation step, steps. And when you are demultiplexing the samples uh, indicated here, you get a coefficient of variation of 5.6%. Now, I would like to show you the real data from the University College London here in the UK. Uh, I'm based in the UK, and uh, it's one of our where reference sites here. It's a, a core facility. Uh, they run 30,000 uh, reactions a year in their, in their core facility. And they use normalase that I just described with their NEB libraries. So the normalase not just works with um, uh, SWIFT kits, it works with the, um, um, our competitors' kits. One thing to know here that normally is also works for, not just for Amplicon libraries, but for whole genome sequencing libraries, as indicated here, which is another version. But what I wanted to show here is the coefficient of variation between the libraries, between the demultiplex library, library reads stacked. So we have 20 million of reads indicated here, and there are 12 libraries demultiplexed. And you can see actually here is a very uh, even coverage across the samples. Now, uh, going back to the Amplicon panels uh, that I just started um, to introduce. So we have off-shelf panels. Uh, these are gene-based panels indicated here and the usual panels that uh, uh, you see on the left. We also have a disease-based panels, which we cover. They are here on the right. And I just wanted to bring out our few uh, best-selling uh, panels uh, that you see here. Uh, this is the gene list. This is what we cover. We cover the hotspot mutations indicated here on TP53. Uh, we cover every exon and uh, all the variants that are known in this uh, gene. Uh, and this is the pie chart uh, just to break down uh, what the coverage looks like, the, the pathogenic variants, uh, just over a thousand uh, uh, 
uh, variants on the panel, benign 161, pathogenic or likely pathogenic, uh, you could actually see the pie chart here. Uh, this is based on the American College of Me uh, Medical Genetics or Association of Molecular Pathology. Uh, this is how we designed uh, the, the panel. Uh, now, I also wanted to highlight that most of our panels, uh, the limit of detection or uh, allelic frequency that you can identify using our panels is one or above one percent. Uh, we do have some of the panels, uh, especially for EGFR now, that could pick up the allelic frequency of less than one percent. But uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's on on the shelf. It's also one of our panels uh, that we sell. Uh, there is a there was an upgrade to 57G pan cancer profiling panel, uh, which we added a few more genes to this panel. And uh, uh, it's important to say that our panels uh, and our gene lists are fully compatible with Varsum. And they are routinely now analyzed with Varsum. We have a customer base increasing uh, with our panels. So we just did uh, the uh, sequence and performance, or so the performance of the panel indicated here with different, in uh, with different inputs down to cell-free DNA, FFPE DNA. And we looked at the percentage on target, uh, which is above 95% indicated here. Uh, with a 10 nanogram of the input. We looked at the low uh, frequency variant calling. As I said, we call uh, the variants, uh, the allelic frequency down to one and above. And uh, this analysis, uh, as I put here, is a streamlined analysis. So the data uh, from the sequencing could be uh, directly imported into uh, Varsum, Varsum Clinical. Not just we cover the genes, uh, the hotspots, we cover uh, the uh, deletions. Uh, as indicated here, there is a one common known lesion in exon 19 on chromosome 7. Uh, it's a 14 basis uh, deletion. Uh, this is uh, it's found in non-small cell lung carcinoma, as an example. Uh, now the design process, we, not just we have the off-shell panels, we do have the custom uh, panels that you can request from us. So the customer provided the gene list. We provide the design. Uh, we finalize with the customer uh, the design. Swift conducts wet lab testing. So we test on the uh, standard DNA and then uh, uh, the performance of the panel before we ship to the customer. Uh, then we provide ongoing support and uh, we turn over to Varsum, uh, they will take on the uh, analysis part and the uh, report generation part. This is the uh, tiled amplicon coverage. So this is the exon that, uh, as an example shown here, and these are the amplicons, various varying amplicons. They are overlapping if it's needed, if it's requested by the customer. So this is how you get the design back from our laboratory. I uh, wanted to show some uh, of the um, recent uh, uh, publication. Uh, one of the publications that I found quite, quite interesting based on our 56G oncology panel indicated here. The sample type was the tumor specific DNA or cell free DNA. And they looked at uh, using NGS and digital PCR. And this is the allele frequency. So if we look at the um, allele frequency of P10, which was identified with NGS sequencing of 0.6%, uh, and they had to validate it with digital PCR, which is more sensitive um, than uh, in next generation sequencing. Uh, still, uh, they were found at the allele frequency in 1.9. Uh, so this is a very marginal uh, very marginal, uh, close to 1% uh, allelic frequency. So I believe those mutations have, uh, is a, it makes sense to be validated by digital PCR. 
but something which is stands for about 23% of allelic frequency, it nicely correlates with digital PCR. So I don't think that there is a need to use the digital PCR for those high allele frequencies. And then there's one for the TP53 with allelic frequency that was identified 0.8%. It was confirmed with digital PCR that is 1.4%. So as you see here, uh, the data coming out from a uh, SWIFT panel nicely correlates with the digital PCR validation experiments. Just in summary, uh, before I turn over to uh, Thomas, we just discussed the SNAP panel with the normalized option included in the, uh, the panel. Uh, it's a single tube, highly multiplexed assay. We can do up to 1,500 amplicons in single tube. Uh, that can be done in two hours. Um, and the input is a 10 nanograms of cell-free DNA, FFP DNA, or um, blood extracted DNA. Performance, we just discussed that our panels can achieve 1% or higher uh, detection of um, allelic frequency. Um, they're compatible, as I said. This is a cost-effective version. And uh, as I mentioned, this can be analyzed with Varsum Clinical. With this in mind, I will stop here. I will turn over to Thomas. Thomas, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gerardas. Uh, maybe in the meantime, uh, there are some questions that you would like to ask. Hmm. The audience may either right now unmute yourself and ask the question, or you can also use the chat and write the questions. If not, then uh, we can proceed with the second presentation. Perhaps I do have a question. It's Thomas here from Warsaw for Heradas. Heradas, could you also comment very quickly on your panels with UMIS, with unique molecular identifiers? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the currently, so we call them the high sensitivity panel. Uh, we do mostly do custom design panels with UMIS. Uh, except one panel that we have, it's the EGFR panel uh, that is sitting on the shelf. It's already been validated and it's been run by our customers. This is where it is. So UMIS will help you to um, call uh, allelic frequency of a less than 1% uh, with uh, 10 nanograms of the sample input or 0.5% uh, with 20 nanograms of the sample input. So those, those panels are in works. They can be custom ordered. And uh, yeah, uh, they, they're ready to go. We, we, we use the UMIs. Yeah. We call them the MIDs, molecular identifiers. But it's basically the same thing. Right, thank you. Thank you, Gerardas. Uh, thank you, Thomas. I guess if there are no other questions, I guess I can start with my part, right, by Wojtek? Yes, please go ahead. Um, let me share. Okay, Wojtek, do you see my screen? Yes, I can. Just make a full screen and it's perfect. Yes. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Thomas Kusera speaking here from, from Sapiter. Uh, as Gerardas was saying just a second ago, we start where sweet biosciences ends, basically. And so, um, Safiter, our company, it's a precision medicine and uh, bioinformatics company based in Switzerland. We are on the market since 2014 and we develop tools for processing and interpretation of NGS data specifically for uh, clinical purposes, although we also serve <coughs> uh, research customers. So I'd, I'd like to start my presentation with uh, uh, bringing your attention to, to the challenges 
we are facing here when it comes to bringing NGS technology to the clinical practice. Obviously, there are uh, many challenges out there. However, from our perspective as a precision medicine and bioinformatics company, we are focusing on three challenges in a particular. Uh, challenge number one <coughs> is the fact that uh, the annotation data are fragmented and spread over many data resources. So I like to say that the annotation process, it's uh, like a puzzle game, right? To, to get a complete picture, you need to place all the pieces of evidence in the right, in the right position. Challenge number one, our understanding of diseases, of mechanism of diseases, you know, it's becoming better pretty much every day. So there is basically a constant need for re-evaluation and uh, keeping your annotation data up to date. And the third big challenge we are facing here, all of us in the clinical sphere, is the lack or little standardization and consistency when it comes to the interpretation of pathogenicity. Meaning there might be two laboratories, for example, two laboratories interpreting the same variant differently, simply as a consequence of uh, having access to different annotation data resources. So these are the three challenges we are uh, addressing. So these three challenges are precisely the reason why we have created Varsam, the free and open knowledge base and community. And I believe some of you have seen it before, as I'm saying, it's free and open, so you can you can try it anytime you like. And so what Warsam does is, well, it does several things, but first it aggregates and cross-references annotation data resources. Yeah, so we basically pull the data from over 70 data resources and bring the data in a single place called Warsam. Yeah, so in other words, these are the 70, 70 pieces of the puzzle game. So that we have annotation data resources such as uh, obviously GNOME AD for uh, population frequencies, CleanVar, uh, expression profiles, uh, annotation data resources for for sa for sample uh, for cancer uh, samples, ICGC, PMKV, Civic, Cosmic, uh, in silico predictions, conservation scores, clinically relevant data for genes, phenotypes and diseases, clinical trials, drugs, list of publications, and so on and so on. Over 70 data resources in a single place. On top of it, we keep the data always up to date. Yeah, so you can be sure, you can rest assured that uh, on WARSAM you always find the latest annotation data from all these 70 data resources. And so in other words, Warsaw, it's very solid. It's very, very, very robust um, knowledge base consisting of many annotation data resources. And on top of it, we implement guidelines for standardization of the interpretation process. So for example, on Warsaw, you can find as we speak you can find the interpretation of pathogenicity based on ACMG guidelines. So I'll get back to it in a while, but for now I'd like to say that you know, Warsam, Warsam's implementation of ACMG guidelines, it's very robust. It leverages the data from 70 data resources. I need to update my presentation here, I see. But it's also transparent and it's also very flexible, as you will see in a while. And uh, we are also implementing guidelines for uh, somatic interpretation such as AMP, NCCN or ASCO. AMP is coming uh, in the upcoming weeks. However, Warsom, the free platform, it's not only about annotation data resources, it's also about, about you, about the community around it. So Warsom counts currently with over 250,000 users globally. So that there, is, there is very uh, a very large global community which is pretty much alive 
and also contribute back to the to Warsaw knowledge base. So on Warsaw you can find you know uh, publication links from our community or classifications, comments, or Warsaw users even start new collaborations. And so this basically creates additional additional layer of annotation data, which it's unique to Warsaw, and you can also leverage it for for your daily work. So this is the very quick story uh, uh, of the free platform and community around it. Now, on top of the free platform, we have developed Warsaw Clinical, which is already a professional uh, service or a professional professional platform uh, for interpretation of NGS data starting from FastQ or VCF. So with the free platform, you can look up individual variants. However, with Barson Clinical, you can start directly from FastQ or VCF. And at the end, you get a clinical report. So Barson Clinical, it's certified as an IDD device. It's certified as an in vitro diagnostic medical device, which means it can be used indeed in clinical settings. Uh, our platform is also HIPAA compliant, which is relevant for our US based customers. And our company is obviously GDPR compliant, and we are certified with ISO 13485 for quality management for medical devices. And now we are also becoming certified with uh, ISO 27001 for information and data security. And on top of all that, we are based in Switzerland, which is country, as we know, it's, it's a country which, which is very, very sensitive towards uh, data security and, and data privacy. privacy. So a, a, apart from all these certifications, we have to also comply with a number of local laws in Switzerland in terms of data privacy and security. And so that means, you know, your data are safe with us and we don't do anything with it. Um, with Warsaw Clinical, you can process your NGS data in four steps. First, obviously, you are supposed to upload your sequencing data to our servers. We have number of deployments of, uh, for Warsaw Clinical. However, most of our European customers use our own physical server in Switzerland. And so for European customers, we don't use any cloud, any commercial cloud such as Amazon or Google. Instead, we have our own physical infrastructure in data center in Switzerland. With Warsaw Clinical, you can process any kind of NGS data uh, as long as it's a human, a human DNA. So uh, you can process gene panels off the shelf, uh, gene panels uh, from sleep biosciences, for example, or your custom gene panel or exome or genome. Uh, we support both sequencing platforms, Illumina and MGI. Uh, when it comes yeah, well, for VCF files, we support Illumina and MGI. And when it comes to the VCF files, there are more options we can accept any VCF file as long as it conforms to the standards for VCF files. So that can be, for example, VCF file from Thermofission, Ion, Ion Torrent, BuzzBio, or, or your, your own VCF file as a, as a result of the secondary uh, analysis. Once you upload the data, you can run the pipeline. So uh, Warsaw Clinical offers a wide range of pipelines covering pretty much all the clinical use cases. We have pipelines for somatic samples, for germline samples, for a pipeline for de novo variants in trios, for carrier risk screening for couples, pipeline for a copy number variation, structural variation, including a pipeline for, for UMIS, for uh, unique molecular, molecular identifiers allowing uh, detection of low uh, frequency variants typically found in, uh, in uh, somatic samples. 
Uh, one stamp chemical comes with a website interface. Obviously, it runs on our infrastructure and you access it over the internet as if it was a regular, a regular website, which means the platform is always updated. You have always the latest annotation data available and you don't have to worry about security, privacy, uh, scaling, scalability issues and so on. We take care of it. And at the end, you may generate a clinical report over, over which you have a complete control. So basically you need to set up your template specifically for your workflow and then basically you can use it for all your analysis. Template can be also fully, fully brand, branded according to your institutional branding policy, for example. Now, I'd like to stress out again where the challenge is here. The challenge lies in the, in the interpretation, and I believe you would agree with me. So, to do the read alignment and variant calling, in other words, the primary part, the primary uh, analysis and secondary analysis of your NGS data is relatively, relatively simple. You know, the real challenge indeed lies in the interpretation part of the pipeline, and that's where you need to bring as many pieces of evidence together, right? You need to get as many pieces of the puzzle game as possible in order to get a complete picture. And that's what we are really focusing on, on the interpretation part. But some clinical covers all the steps of the pipeline, primary, secondary, and tertiary. However, our main main focus here is the is the interpretation. Uh, Warsome Clinical, it's not a replacement for your in-house bioinformatics expertise. On contrary, it complements your uh, bioinformatics expertise. You know, Warsome Clinical, it's a it's a tool. It's a productivity tool which allows you and your bioinformatics team to work more productively, more systematically, and in, and focus your energy where it is really needed. Yeah. And together we can increase basically significantly the diagnostic yield for your patients. Now here I just wanted to share with you very quickly uh, our list of clients. So as you can see, we have uh, uh, quite a quite a few clients in in Europe, pretty much in all the European countries. This map again has not been updated in a while, uh, and we have also a number of clients on the global scale in the US, Asia, Latin America, and so on. Uh, from the pricing perspective, Warsome Clinical does not have a license. Warsome Clinical charges on a per sample basis. Uh, when it comes to the fast queue, fast queue files, uh, we charge on the number of megabases in reads. And when it comes to the VCF, uh, the price depends on the number number of variants. So feel free to reach out to Wojciech and from Perlan to get the pricing sheet. As Perlan is our distributor in Poland. Uh, there are basically two ways how you can use Barson Clinical. You can use it as the so-called stand-alone solution. So stand-alone solution, it's open for any kind of NGS data. Gene panels, exomes, genomes, commercial gene panels, custom gene panels. You can upload anything you like and we charge you on a monthly basis or quarterly basis, depending on the usage of the platform. So this is just the uh, simple pay as you go model, no commitment, no license. The other option is the so-called a bundled solution. And this is where our partners such as Swift Biosciences come into the picture. So the bundled solution, it's a form of prepayment. It's a, and it comes with a kit, for example, from Swift Biosciences. So we have partnered up here for the bundled solution. So the bundled solution includes everything. It includes the kit, you know, the regencies, uh, chemicals for the library preparation, 
bundled with Warsong Clinical for data interpretation and reporting. So this is a basically form of prepayment, uh, which allows you to analyze a certain number of uh, gene panels, for example. And the third option, in fact, there is a third option, and that's uh, on-prem installation. We also offer on-prem installation of Warsong Clinical, which makes sense uh, typically only for a large uh, diagnostic centers and large hospitals with a large volume of samples. Obviously, we work uh, with distributors here in Poland. We collaborate with Perlan, uh, who is very well uh, familiarized with, with the platform and uh, they um, may be able you know, to answer your basic uh, support questions or questions about the use of the platform. All right, so this is my quick introduction. And now I'd like to give you a very quick introduction to Warsom and Warsom Clinical User Interface. So I'm trying to figure out how can I stop the screen sharing. I ah, hear it is. Oh. Oh, excuse me. Let me share it again. So now uh, we are running out of time, I guess, but still I'd like to show you very quickly what Warsam and Warsam Clinical is. Um, to do a full demonstration, uh, we would need at least an hour, which we don't have, obviously. And so I'm just going to give you a very quick tour through our tools. So here you can see the free platform available at warsom.com. I believe uh, uh, some of you at least have seen it before. It's, a, it's the knowledge base for annotation purposes and, and community around it. So here uh, on a single page, you can see a wealth of annotation data uh, coming from all these 70 uh, data resources. So this oh, is oh, Sorry to interrupt sorry. you. You may want to share your screen. I'm not. We can see your presentation. Oh. On-prem installation slide, yeah. Now, do you see the website? Yes. Ah, okay, sorry for that. It's the first time I'm using Teams, so I apologize for these issues. So, um, yeah, so I was saying um, Varsam is the free free platform, the knowledge base and community around it available at uh, varsam.com. And it pulls the data from over 70 data resources and brings it, you know, to a one place to Varsam. And so on a single page here, you can see a wealth of annotation data. This is a very, very long page, uh, very well, very well structured. Uh, allowing, you know, uh, which you can explore perhaps a bit later. For now, I'd like to tell you a little bit more very quickly about the interpretation uh, uh, procedure based on ACMG guidelines here. So this is a, a particular variant in a BRAF gene uh, where you can see six ACMG criteria fired automatically based on the aggregated evidence coming from all these 70 data resources yeah. and here uh, you can see the uh, the explanation for every criterion telling you in a great detail why it fired or why it did not fire so uh, that allows you to review every particular situation every particular criterion and possibly make your own judgment call. Not all the criteria can be can be fully automated. Certain criteria require a patient specific information or information, for example, about uh, for allele segregation. So in those cases, it's you who is supposed to trigger or untrigger certain great criteria in line with with your best knowledge. You can also specify the transcript for ACMG based uh, classification, which may affect, you know, the final verdict. Or you can also specify the strength of the evidence with uh, in line with uh, ACMG guidelines. 
according for I, I do know or oh, well we, we all know that clinical clinical uh, laboratories rely on clean war a lot which it's a, of course very useful resource however according to acmg guidelines clean war it's only a supporting piece of evidence yeah so this is again about the puzzle game yeah we shall not rely only on two or three pieces of the puzzle game with three pieces we cannot get a complete picture we really need here to adopt more sophisticated approaches especially when it comes to larger data sets such as exomes and genomes all right and uh, now varsom clinical so varsom clinical shares the annotation knowledge base with the free platform with the with, with varsom However, it allows you, you know, to start directly from FastQ or VCF. So first you upload your data. Here uh, you can upload your data directly from your computer or there is also API application programming interface available for every step of the analysis. So you can basically automate the whole workflow. Uh, once you upload your data, you can start with the pipeline. You can start, you know, from FastQ, from VCF. There is a tumor normal pipeline. There is a pipeline for trios, for carrier risk screening. You can perform a gene list analysis. Uh, there is a pipeline for copy number variation, structural variation, pipeline for UMIS, unique molecular, molecular identifiers, or uh, M, MDI. So, uh, yeah, I don't know the other abbreviation. And so, assuming uh, we want to start from FastQ. Uh, we shall specify, you know, the details of the pipeline, whether it's a germline sample, a somatic sample. We shall specify the assay used for library preparation, which can be any any gene panel, custom, commercial, exome, genome. For example, Swift Biosciences is already available on the platform. All the all the gene gene panels of the shelf uh, panels from Swift Bio are already available on the platform for your convenience. You shall specify the reference genome and a couple of other things. Uh, you, you can, for example, type in the patient phenotypes and diseases. And later in the process, you can use these terms for a variant filtering according to these patient uh, phenotypes and diseases, for example. And then you can already start the pipeline the analysis of a whole exome starting from that from FastQ takes about half an hour. Gene panels, depending on the size, between five all the way to 15, 20, half an hour, depending on the size of your data. So here I'd like to show you very quickly the results uh, for a for for a whole genome analysis here starting from FastQ there are al always almost 5 million variants all sorted by pathogenicity according to the ACMG guidelines and around the variant variant table you can see a wealth of annotation data broken down in tabs yeah so here you can see the ACMG interpretation at the region browser where you can see all the variants in the gene, clean var, cosmic, caviar, population frequency, somatic data resources, uh, clinically, clinically relevant data resources such as GDC, uh, in silico, oh, sorry, um, expression profiles, in silico predictions, conservation scores, and so on and so on. All the transcript, clinically relevant data for phenotypes, genes, uh, where are genes? Are uh, here. HPO, human phenotype ontology, and so on and so on. Um, now, Warstam Clinical also allows you to set up your, your custom classifications. So, for example, this is a pathogenic variant according to the ACMG guidelines. Now, excuse me, the first one. And however, if you if you don't agree with the with the default verdict for whatever reason, you may reclassify the variant as a benign or uncertain significance. Or you can even set up your your own custom classifications, such as protective or uh, variant which needs to be discussed later, and so on. And so that's how, that's the reason why you can see here these 
these marks in this column here. So these, these, these tags mark your custom classifications. And the important thing here is that these classifications, custom classifications, stay with the variant. So once you upload a new sample with the same variant, you will see the same classification mark. And we can also take your manually curated list of variants. You, I guess you may have it in a spreadsheet, typically, and upload it privately to your account with Watson Clinical for the purposes of variant classifications. And another really useful feature is the is the sample sample cross-referencing. Yeah, so, for example, this particular variant has been found so far in a heterozygous variant and heterozygous form in three samples. In this analysis, another whole genome and in another sample called the cryptic sample. Yeah, so, this is something that allows you, you know, to go back and forth between your past cases and current cases, compare analytic balances, patient phenotypes, and together with custom classifications, the sample cross-referencing allow you to increase over time your productivity and more, more, more import importantly, the, uh, the diagnostic yield for your patients. So this is all what we are actually uh, talking about here, you know, in, in, in increasing the diagnostic yield for, for our patients. Um, the platform comes with a number of QC reports. You can download, uh, you know, the coverage report, coding coverage report, region list coverage report. You can download the BAM file, VCF file. Here you can, for example, see the coding coverage report in an Excel sheet broken down by individual genes, exon number and sequencing depth. And so this is the place where you can identify the regions, you know, with a, with a low coverage or regions that have been skipped altogether for some reason. So this, and this sheet allows you to troubleshoot issues with essay design or, or issues with sequencing. So that can be very, very useful, especially when it comes to your uh, custom uh, uh, gene panels, you know, uh, designed, for example, by, by Sleep Biosciences. So it allows you to optimize the whole workflow. Um, then uh, filters, there are uh, quite a few filters. So um, let's see what's available here. Um, you can filter your variance based number of based on number of criteria, ACMG criteria, frequencies, clean var, chromosomal position, pathogenicity, zygosity, function, whether it's a five UTR uh, coding splicing variant, you can set up a gene list and use it as a filter. Uh, again, from the pricing perspective, we charge you only once. We charge you always for the initial analysis, and then you can apply all these filters, including a gene lists. So you can have multiple gene lists, for example, for your exome, which are all included in the original sample price. So let's create an example. Let's see, we want to filter out, let's say only uh, variants with a frequency less than one percent and only pathogenic and likely pathogenic variants. Oh, we have to give it a name. So now we have, oh, here is the other filter. Now we have two filters within the filter set. Then uh, it's being applied. As you can see, the filtering works really fast. That's really important, you know, to, to note. And we have built, you know, the whole platform for from, from per, you know, also keeping the performance in mind. So uh, when it comes to genomes, right, we can have easily 5 million variants. You really need a platform which works uh, really fast. So now you can see we are left with only five variants down from 5 million. We can deactivate certain filters or bring them up again, or we can modify the whole filter set and we can include now additional criterion based on ACMG ACMG guidelines, for example, the PP5 criterion with a, with a strong strength of the evidence, and we are going to apply it again to our sample, and now we are left with only one, only one variant in the variant table. So these filters are dynamic. Uh, you can play with these filters and the results, the results update dynamically. However, there are even more comprehensive filters called algorithmic filters. Algorithmic filters are 
basically a, a little programs we built specifically for our customers. And we like to be in in a close touch with our customers in, in order to be able to provide as as much personalized services as possible. And these algorithmic filters are part of that story. So, uh, for example, with algorithmic filters, you can you can you can analyze trio what trio uh, de novo variants in trios or carrier risk for couples compound heterozygous variants segregation kind of analysis. So basically, we can encode any kind of filtering you can possibly think of. You just need to tell us how exactly you want to filter your variants, and we will develop. A specific algorithmic filter for you based on that. Uh, again, all these algorithmic filters are free of charge. I mean, the use, the application, the initial development might be subject uh, to charge, but the use, ongoing use, it's it's already included again in the original sample price. Uh, now, just very quick, very quickly, the reporting. Uh, so once you narrow down the list of your variants, uh, you need to decide whether you want to report it or not. So uh, once you do, once you make the decision to report it, you select it for export, and then you can proceed. And you can either you know you, you can either download the list of selected variants in a spreadsheet, or you can proceed and you can uh, generate a clinical report right on the platform. Um, so as I was saying before, this is kind of like an interactive interactive reporting where you have a complete control over the report. So first you need to set up the template. You can customize it according to your branding policy. You can upload your logo. You can set up you know, the header. You can change the colors, fonts, sizes, backgrounds. You can include pictures and tables. And it can be also translated. The common common elements can be can be also fully translated into into any language. And then on the left side here, you get the list of widgets. In other words, the list of annotation uh, the pieces of annotation data available for a particular variant. So, for example, first uh, you can drag in, you know, the content area, and then you can drag in uh, variant information. Then you may drag in information for the gene. Then you may drag in the list of list of drugs, clinical trials. Then it comes, you know, to somatic cases, for example. Typically, you can also drag in the clinically clinically relevant data, and then at the end, uh, list of publications. So everything is fully editable. Here you can see the content area where you can provide, you know, the custom comment for the report. And here you can see the in details for the variant, AGBS term, classification of it, the transcript, exon number, zygosity, frequency. Uh, clinically, clinically relevant data for genes, list of phenotypes, list of clinical trials, list of drugs, list of publications. Oh, where are publications? Oh. And uh, here, variant references and uh, list of publications. Everything is fully editable, so if you if you don't like this publication, you can take it out, and you can add additional publication here. So it's fully editable, and at the end, you can save it as a PDF file or or as a doc file. So that this has been. Obviously, just a very, very quick introduction to to Varsum Clinical. Uh, it's it's a complex platform with a number of sophisticated features for custom classification, sample cross referencing, right, and and so on, allowing you to increase your productivity and diagnostic yield at the end of the day. That's what uh, we are all uh, together trying to do to increase. The diagnostic yield and outcomes for patients. All right, so I would just very very quickly conclude. Uh, Varsum Clinical, it's a it's a complete solution for any kind of NGS NGS data for gene panels, 
uh, off the shelf gene panels from Swift Bio or any other provider of exomes, genomes. There is a wide range of pipelines. Uh, there is no license, no commitment. We charge on per sample basis. Um, and uh, the platform is certified as an IDD, IDD device, in vitro diagnostic medical device. And uh, you can get access to it, for example, you know, through our partnership with Swift Biosciences as the as the bundled as the bundled solution, which is distributed in in Poland through our joint distributor through Perlan. Thank you very much, and I would be very glad to take some questions. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, there is a question in the chat from Paulina. Uh, is there Build a pipeline tool to compare filter calls from tumor to the whole blood sequencing results. Yes, I think you are referring to a tumor tumor normal pairs. Yeah, like a per analysis. Yeah. Okay. It's it's, it's uh, yes. And I think that you showed that you may choose the genome version uh, to analyze the variants, right? Mm -hmm. You can choose from two reference genomes, AG19 or 38. We also annotate, you know, all a mitochondrial variants in both reference genomes. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? If not, then I would like to thank everyone for your time you spent with us. And uh, since this meeting was recorded, then I can uh, share with you the recorded version so you can take a look at it in your uh, free time. Thank you very much and have a very nice day. Thank you all for taking time. Thank you, Wojtek, for organizing this. Thank you, Gerardas, and uh, have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Berlin, and thank you, Varsin.